Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and I am just wrapping up my trip here in Halifax and publishing another piece of content that I created during my stay here. It's a one-on-one -on -one interview with a CEO of a company called Watt Wagons. It's an e-bike company. Uh, the e-bike company was the bike selected by Robbie Kampaya, my friend. You probably saw the one-on-one -on -one interview with him. He's a PhD scholar in battery technology, has got a fantastic fantastically bright future he's 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 an even better human being but he invited me out to sort of uh, attend and participate in the uh, guinness book of world record attempt for longest distance travel in a 24-hour period on an e-bike he successfully completed this guinness book record by traveling more than 1500 laps on this quarter mile track as well as 395 miles in a 24-hour period. So congrats to him. This interview is a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the CEO of Watt Wagons to try and understand a little bit more about what e-bikes are, what the value is, and uh, I think you all might enjoy it, especially if you're supporters of electric mobility. We are here at Scotia Speed World here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I've got a friend, Pushkar, from Watt Wagon. Hey. Uh, thank you so much for taking time to, well, first of all, thank you for the invite. Sure. And um, you've got a significant part in what's going on here. So why don't you talk about, number one, um, your company, and number two, why are we on a racetrack? Absolutely. Well, Sean, thank you so much. For first Absolutely. Off, thank you so much for coming here. And uh, it's gorgeous out here in uh, Nova Scotia and Halifax. It's surprisingly a little bit warm yeah so. <laughs> yep mm -hmm. but uh, yeah so uh, what wagon so I I'm a commuter I live in the Boston area and it got to a point where I it was more efficient for me to take a bicycle to work than to take my car yeah. right and so there was a need and as I started biking I realized that it became harder and harder as the weather became worse right with the snow sometimes it rained uh, that's what got me into e-biking but as is the case with pretty much everyone, uh, I went through different kits, different components, and the breaking point literally was <laughs> when my chain broke for the fourth time in like five months because there's just so much strain on it mm -hmm. uh, with the, the typical the BBS HD type like mid-drive kit motors. And then I, I embarked on creating or at least coming up with an idea of having a torque sensing motor, which is the Bafang Ultra, and that completely changed the way I bike because the Bafang Ultra is actually, when I say torque sensing means it goes the, it, it goes faster the harder you pedal. It feels very natural. It's mm -hmm. like a electric assist. And that allowed me to, uh, again, using my Apple Watch as a metric, if I were to spend like 100 calories on a bike for let's say a mile worth of distance, I would spend nearly 75 on an e-bike, mm -hmm. right? So the, the, the work was not too far off, yeah. but it became more enjoyable. Right, so I, I rode longer. So in an overall, I actually spent more time exercising sure. and having fun. So, so that was sort of the genesis of getting into e-bikes. But as I got into a torque sensing motor, uh, believe it or not, somebody from Reddit <laughs> actually <laughs> reached out to me and said, you know what, my, my significant other is, you know, she doesn't have a good selection of e-bikes uh, just because e-bikes tend to be more for the medium and the large and the extra large sizes. So can you build something for, you know, like an extra small size mm -hmm. and still have the power, still have the battery capacity to go like 40, 50 miles? And I said, you know what, I, I may have a solution. So th that's how we got started. So last year, early last year, I put together a design. Uh, uh, I got the mounts made in Asia in titanium and we welded the first frame, I want to say around June or July last year. And uh, and we sold it. But it took like three, four months, and, and built it and sold it. And then I refined it a little bit more and launched the company, like the website, officially early January. Yeah. So that's sort of the genesis of when we when we sort of you know went live. Uh, the interesting yeah. thing there is that actually got Lenny's eyes and Ravi's mm -hmm. eyes. So he, and I posted it on Reddit. I said, you know, I've succeeded. I've built something that makes sense. And uh, then we sort of collaborated. So Ravi and I, we collaborated on effectively upping the quality of components because uh, I realized that the market really has a need for a premium e-bike uh, at a not so premium mm -hmm. price. So my competition, uh, not not my competition, at least the, the market I want to be in is in the, the, the premium market where 
they were I'm solving real problems for commuters about ergonomics. So we've chosen the components that make the ride uh, comfortable. Sure. Even if you go like 100, 200 miles, and you, you see Ravi doing that right now, we wanted to make the bicycle powerful because the longer you ride, uh, the more you feel the need to explore different terrains. So you mm -hmm. wanted the bicycle to have enough performance, whether it's the tire, the motor, the battery capacity, to really conquer a vast majority of the stuff you're going to ride in. Uh, the third problem we were running into was, um, you know, reliability. You know, as 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 you ride more, uh, the components tend to break a lot. You know, mm -hmm. you've, you've seen the chains uh, uh, rusting out, and then you know, the sprockets bending and. Uh, brakes failing, so we just wanted to choose components that were sort of battle tested, uh, and we, we've done that. And the last part is upgradability. Uh, being a technologist, uh, I know you you cover mm -hmm. a lot of e-vehicles, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you know upgrades are a part of evolving technology. Yeah. Whether it's a new battery pack, whether it is a new transmission, or or the drivetrain, or the motor. So we've developed a a, a frame or which is sort of open, right? I mean, if you want a bigger battery pack, that's fine. It's mm -hmm. a 52 volt pack. You can swap it out with something that you already have. Uh, and surprisingly, some of our initial customers are doing that. So they buy the default battery that comes with the bike, but they have an older battery from a different bike that they've previously owned. They hold onto it, and then plugs right in. So they can now get double the range. So it's pretty cool the way things have worked out. Um, I think it's I think it's interesting. So this is this is definitely the, the e-bike is not a world that that I've spent a whole lot of time in. Mm -hmm which I think in, in some ways is really good because um, I bet a lot of people who are watching this video are, are also considering, uh, should, should I get an e-bike? What makes it so special? Um, in, in, in terms of the battery, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that because I'm, yeah. I'm very curious about some of the thought and intent behind design uh, selection of, of, of batteries, what types of batteries, chemistry. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, and it, it's, it's great that you bring that up because we are in Halifax where, you know, we have Professor Dan's lab and, and they, he's one of the leading researchers in, in uh, nickel batteries and nickel, what are NI, NI, NCA, yeah. <laughs> or the way yeah. they're off. Uh, uh, what I'm trying to get at is, I believe the technology is here where we can have nearly a day-long charge in a manageable form factor. I don't believe even four or five years ago, the battery packs were either that efficient or we had the battery management systems to you know, have a nice, nearly 900 watt hour battery pack. But it gets a little bit better because not only have we increased the size of the battery pack, and I'll come to the chemistry in a little bit, mm -hmm. not only have we increased the size of the battery pack, uh, we'd, uh, one of the problems we wanted to solve was what happens if you discharge the battery? Yeah. So you, you run 50, 60 miles, and now what? You mm -hmm. have to charge it back because it's, you know, it's like a bigger bucket. The, the, the bigger sure. the bucket, it takes longer it takes to longer. fill it up. Yep. So he said, okay, you know what? We need a fatter charger, a higher ampere charger. So uh, one of the things we do is we provide a 7, 8 amp charger. Mm -hmm. So believe it or not, you can fill up that entire battery in two hours. Yeah, that's great. Right? That, that's, so it's not only just the battery, it's, it's the size of the power you can provide to charge it up, almost like a supercharger, if you will. Right? Mm -hmm. So now, in terms of the chemistry, uh, uh, the uh, nickel, uh, cobalt, mm -hmm. and magnesium, I want to say, if I'm getting that right. So there are different chemistries. So we use the one that uh, currently is available in the Teslas. Mm -hmm. So we use the Panasonic cells. Mm -hmm. uh, they have excellent chemistry. Uh, and by chemistry, I mean the retain, the charge discharge cycles. Uh, don't necessarily degrade the performance of the capacity of the battery for at least a thousand to thousand five hundred cycles, which is phenomenal. So, uh, just to give you a sense, if you are riding once a day and if you charge a charge once, that's one cycle. So, a thousand days is nearly three years mm -hmm. worth of riding with little to no loss in battery capacity. Um, so, you've got you've got standard traditional bikes and then you have e-bikes. Mm -hmm. um, for someone who's probably familiar with a, a standard bike why would someone consider something like this? I know you mentioned yeah. it makes it a little bit more effortless. Mm -hmm. You can go a lot longer, but yeah. what would you say to someone who's like, why should I consider, I, I, I've got an electric vehicle, I, I own one, I want to support, you know, other e-mobility, yeah. why, yeah. why, why consider an e-bike? Another great question. So, so this is, I mean, I'm going to approach it from like two or three different angles and say, so my, uh, my thought was not only to become more energy efficient, but uh, also do something green. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so 
So we, we have a Tesla, we, uh, we monitor our energy usage, we've gone solar, but that still doesn't fix the last mile problem, which is, uh, if I want to do something quick within three or four blocks, typically it's faster for me to do something on a bicycle mm -hmm. than to pick out an automobile. So even if I'm doing groceries or things like that, it's just faster on a bicycle rather than me taking the car out, driving through seven or eight stoplights, trying to find parking. So that was one. The second thing was, uh, for me as a commuter, uh, this became, because it's an electric assist, not only was I getting exercise, I was having a lot more fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's not a throttle, it's not a moped. Sure. Uh, so that really encouraged me to bike to work a lot more often than I, than I could have possibly. So that not only got me there uh, with a better sense, you know, just mental clarity, better fitness, but more importantly, it got me there faster. Mm. Uh, I, I know I spoke about this earlier in the interview. In Boston, when I drive today, uh, and even though I live 12 miles away, it takes me around an hour and five minutes door to door. Yeah. And I still have to find a parking spot and pay additional parking. Mm -hmm. So it's gas, it's tolls, it's parking. Right now, I I do door to door, uh, like literally, I'm at, at my desk within 52 minutes. So that's after getting there, taking a quick shower, no parking hassle, it's, I can chain it up anywhere. And for the entire year worth of riding, it takes me under ten dollars yes. of electricity. It just orders of magnitude better and different. And again, I want to stress that it is not an it's not a moped. Yeah. Right. And that's I think one of the things that people you're still doing know. some work. We are doing work. Yeah. So I'm yeah. healthier. I so if, if you <laughs> <laughs> so I've gone from yay to yay. Exactly. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think one of my last things that I want to touch on mm -hmm. is something that we talked about last night at yeah. dinner, which is. Um, the difference between you can find a lot of e-bikes online. Yeah, you can yeah. find e-bikes that are are made in in other countries yeah. with with maybe not as much craftsmanship, mm -hmm. intent, and quality. Mm -hmm. You're you're building these things yeah. with a lot of love, yeah. a lot of care. They're 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 you're you're building them in in, in Boston, Boston area. Yeah, yeah. yeah we are. So honestly, you know, you touched upon something that is very important for me. This for us, for me, it's it's. It's literally a lot of, lot of love has gone and a lot of thought has gone in. Uh, and that's because we, not only are we solving real problems, but I think in the U.S. there's a very uh, res you know, small market of people or small selection of people who build stuff locally. Mm -hmm. Like is the case with pretty much anything out there, all our components are sourced from most you know, around the world. You know, the yeah. battery packs, the Panasonic is J Japanese. The, the hub is roll off is German, the bell drive is carbon gates, you know, the fenders are, you know, so it's, it's this is America, right? So you, mm -hmm. And we're getting the best components available and then handcrafting that into an amazing experience. So we are trying to become a premier, uh, you know, a US firm or a US manufacturer, if you will, that produces quality products. Yeah. And we are going up against the best of the best in the world. And, and you just saw, and I know Ravi is still on his like 350 or 400 lap mm -hmm. right now. So we are coming, this, this vehicle performs flawlessly. It is extremely smooth. It is uh, the highest power allowed legally. So it's a 750 watt motor, hard tuned, so you cannot touch it. You know, you, end users cannot mm -hmm. <laughs> tinker it and do something mm -hmm. with it. And even then, it just goes. So as a comparison, most of our competition uses motors that are even though they are little smaller waters, they are nice and smooth. But what we are trying to do is give users the opportunity to explore more stuff. Mm -hmm. So all the smaller motor uh, power bikes, they are sort of you know uh, a single uh, single purpose. Right? Either they're off road or they're on road. So with, with this amount of power that we have, again within the legal limits, you can you can explore more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so so this is a this is a bike that's not going to just last six months. And then you're going to have to get rid of it, throw it away. It breaks. This is something that you intend for owners to keep for many years, many correct? Years, yeah. And, and part of our tagline is, you know, we, this is this is an automotive grade e-bike. Yeah. I'm thinking about this bicycle as a true replacement for an automotive vehicle, which is my use case, which is which could be the use case for a lot of people, right? Whether you're running groceries, you're running errands, you're commuting to work, you're visiting your friends. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice low-risk way of getting things done, very energy-efficient way of getting things done. Uh, but most importantly, as you said, 
uh, we tried to model it against an automobile. So it, our benchmark was we have to have this vehicle go around 2,000 miles before any maintenance is needed. Mm -hmm. And literally the only maintenance needed at 2,000 miles is the rear hub that you see. It's a roll-off hub. It, it has like a, a, a little bit of oil, maybe a couple of ounces of oil. Mm -hmm. You drain it, literally it's, it's 10 minutes, you switch it out and you're good, another 2,000 miles. Brilliant. Uh, and uh, the last thing I want to mention at least from, a, from our approach is we, we've, launched, we've launched this bike along with the commuter companion program. So that's what we call it. What that is, is uh, so think of the evolving technology, right? So today we have a great motor, great battery pack, but in three or four years, mm -hmm. as things evolve, it'll be better. It'll be better. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it'll be more compact. You know, maybe it'll be more efficient. Maybe the cable routing systems will change. Maybe there's a better rack or more gizmos. So we offer our customers the ability to swap out components, not, not just the brakes mm -hmm. and saddle and the suspension seat posts, but literally the frame and the motor and the battery from us. So if we come up with something that is really cool and nice, you can piecemeal swap those out, just buy the replacements from us, and we'll make sure all the other components are backward compatible. So boom, two Great. years, three years, four years from now, if there's something better out there. Plug and play. Plug and play. And that's really a game changer. We want you to enjoy this bike for, for a long, long time and, and cater to a lot of use cases that you may have. Well, if any evidence of, of the craftsmanship and quality is, you know, how long this bike is going around <laughs> on this track, um, I think it's a true testament to to uh, the, the thought and intent and yeah. the quality behind the vehicle. So, yeah. uh, Watt Wagons, how can someone learn more about uh, your products? Uh, great. So, the first thing you could do is you could go to wattwagons.com, so it's wattwagons.com. Yep. Um, the others are, we are uh, very active on forums, so electric bike review is mm -hmm. good. We can go to your blog and mm -hmm. your video site. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you, you're just branching out and then that's awesome. Yep. Uh, we also have other social channels on Instagram. You can follow us on at Watt Wagons, mm -hmm. the same handle on Twitter. Great. Uh, so, and, and, and Reddit. So yeah. absolutely. We are, we are everywhere. We are trying to do the right thing and yep. be as transparent and as helpful as possible. That's great. Well, uh, thank you so much again for the invite to this event. Uh, great to get to know you and excited to uh, continue that uh, friendship over a long period of time. So Absolutely congratulations. Sure. Thank you All so right. much. I